hi, and welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. Uh, we're looking at uh, volcanology, looking at the different types of volcanoes, and today we're looking at the shield volcano. So there are many types that are on the planet, but we must also remember one key thing. That a volcano is simply a, a, a section, a, an area, or a certain location on the Earth's crust where there is a break, a fracture, a split, a rupture, um, and a, a place where the magma can come up and rise through different mechanisms and turn into lava as it flows from that crack or hole or, or gap or fracture in the crust and flows onto the surface of the Earth. And we know that lava is going to cool and consolidate and crystallize into solid rock we call igneous rock. Basically, a volcano isn't just that beautiful, really tall Hollywood kind of volcano that's conical shaped and very explosive. Volcanoes come in different types based on the magma and lava that create it. Looking at shield, the shield is one type and it's based on, again, the magma. We can also look at the lava as well. So magma is intrusive, the INT, and lava is the extrusive form, EXT. And looking at basaltic magma or lava. Now basaltic, the characteristics, first it's mafic or mafic, which means it is high in, uh, this arrow means high, so it's point up, high in ferromagnesium. Okay, so it's high in iron, it's high in magnesium, it's high also in calcium. What, however, because it's made up against a scale, the elements and how much of each element is in the magma is also low in potassium and low in sodium. So that's kind of the general makeup of elements you find in a basaltic magma. Okay, and we call this mafic or mafic. All right, so the other components is the viscosity. The viscosity of this magma. Now, you could also find magma uh, in these shield volcanoes that is called andesitic, and that is another type of magma or lava, which is a bit different to basaltic, and we'll get to that. So viscosity of basaltic magma is very low, and this is because of the silica, SiO2, so silica. Don't forget, silica is made up of the, the two most common elements in the crust, silicon and oxygen. Si is silicon, O2 is oxygen, and this is a low. Now we do percent in weight, WT is weight, and it's between 45 to 55% weight. So it makes up probably half in terms of the composition. But in terms of magma, that's very, very low. That's the lowest it can go, really. And the low silica creates low viscosity, so it is very, very runny. Think of like maple syrup. Also looking at the dissolved gases. Dissolved gases would be low because it's not very thick which is viscosity, and the gases would escape quicker and more easily because it's low viscosity, it's not very thick. It won't trap the gases. And then also looking at temperature. So what kind of temperature is that magma rising at and exiting the crust and obviously the lava, what temperature the lava is? And that is around 1,000 to 1,200 degrees Celsius, or that's 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit to 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. So, pretty hot. Pretty hot. So that is the composition of basaltic magma lava that comes out, and this is the foundation, the fundamentals of creating a shield volcano. Alright, so drawing a very basic schematic or diagram of a shield volcano from a profile view. Don't forget, a profile view is a side view. So looking at the side of this volcano, as you can see, it's, well, general shape gives it away. Obviously, the shape is what gives it its name shield very, very like a like a semi-sphere or dome shape and it is extremely wide and it can be very tall or high in elevation we'll get to why that is later on and it can be you can be on the volcano and not really realize it's a volcano because it's not that classic very steep sided very aggressive looking volcano it's very subdued it could be like an, even a very high hill until it starts to erupt and you start to run but yeah, very subdued. And again, come back to the formation. So here we have our magma chamber. Here we have our could be a volcanic island or oceanic crust, funnel crust. We have our crust right here. 
we have our lithosphere with our magma chamber inside of it and then obviously below this we have the asthenosphere which connects convection currents and magma with the magma chamber okay and also we have the moho in here as well which is the difference between the crust and the mantle so here's my central vent here's also my crater or central crater we also have different craters different vents on the side it could be on the flanks over here which is the sides of the volcanoes and you have this conduit which is the main connecting pipe from the magma chamber to the central vent and because of the magma being very basaltic, very runny, very hot, it can create lava fountains on occasion where the amount of energy and pressure spits out the lava in high fountains that are spectacular to viewpoint view. Uh, recently, Mount Etna was doing that and it's uh, created an extremely high lava. So because this is very basaltic lava, it comes out very runny and very, very fast and it starts to flow in a very long, since long distance flow it doesn't stay near the crater like other volcanoes it flows with gravity as far as it can go because it's very hot very uh, low in viscosity and very runny so it flows a long way and also there's high volume in these flows so this shield volcano is basically built on these very thin layers of basaltic lava that have built up over a course of time also the frequency not only do you have a lot of this free-flowing pancake syrup kind of maple syrup type lava that's going to flow a long way and build a very wide very wide very tall volcano it's because of the frequency the amount of times that this volcano is going to erupt and it's very often in some cases like the uh, volcano of Kilauea which is on the Big Island of Hawaii, uh, has been erupting pretty much every day since 1983. So it's very consistent in its pattern or eruption cycle. And you can also have eruptions coming off side vents, side tubes, lava tubes caused by uh, the lava. And you can have a flank eruption that comes out here. You might also have some gas and fumaroles, uh, gas vents coming out of the volcano. And it is going to build this very big, tall uh, volcano. And in terms of VEI, or the explosiveness, or the amount of ejected material, VEI would be zero to one, meaning it's fusive, which means that it's non-explosive. And it comes back to the magma again. Non-explosive means that there's not enough gas that's trapped under high pressure inside the magma to create a large eruption or explosion. Because the magma is very, very low in gas and it seeps out naturally, that the lava is free to just flow out. It's not trapped by the gas or the pressure. It just flows out naturally. And again, that comes back to the frequency and that links up to how wide these volcanoes are and how tall these volcanoes are. Fun fact, Mauna Loa is the tallest active volcano in the world. And it is uh, from the base of the volcano, which is actually a depression inside the crust. It is actually around 55,000 feet from the top of the top of Mauna Loa in Hawaii down to the very bottom of, of uh, Mauna Loa, right in the crust. That's nearly 10.5 miles or 17 kilometers. That's insane. It's a big volcano. So that's a shield volcano. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.